Let's go ahead and bring in Steiner Sports CEO, Brandon Steiner. One of the country's top memorabilia mogul. I have an unbelievable guest, Brandon Steiner. Brandon is second to none. Kim Hampton, former WNBA Liberty star. She's got a beautiful voice, not to mention she's multifaceted as far as her talent. I had the uh, genuine honor of watching her play back in the early days when the WNBA was just getting started. And she was, to say the very least, a fan favorite. Uh, and still, and you still are. People, you know, you were one of those that was sticking forever and a day. Uh, welcome and thanks for coming up. Uh, you know, I, you know, I, they know I love WNBA basketball, uh, but it's nice to see you. Thank you for having me, yeah. So your mom. Yes. Um, but when, when I was just back to on the WNBA thing, you went to school for um, basketball and something else, or <laughs> well, I was a theater major when I went to school. Actually, it's so funny. Oh, I have something in my eye. Um, actually, when I got to college, I really didn't know what I wanted to study. But, um, you know, at first I got into communications, and I, and I took a couple of classes, and it just. It was just like, oh, yeah, no, that, you know, I don't know about this one. But I took an acting class. But you class. didn't have the WNBA to rely on, kind of. So you actually were going to school oh, because. I was going to school to go to school. I knew I had the European option. Okay. So, so you know, when I, but, but I took an acting class as an elective. And I just fell in love. I fell in love. And, you know, for me, acting is is like athletics I always feel that sports and athletics is more than just a game the lessons that you learn you know you, you it's amazing so in acting it's the same thing it's being able to dig deep within yourself and pull out feelings that we've all felt I mean we, we have so many situations you know that we've all felt you know and so it's it's about the believability it's about just owning that moment and being in that moment you know so I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be a theater major and everything. So I majored in theater. But when I graduated from college, there was no professional basketball in America. But I knew that I was going to go to Europe. You oh, know, you were, were going to go to I Europe. I knew. I knew it because um, I had played, you know, my sophomore year, I played on a USA team. Then my senior year, I went to Taiwan with the USA team and stuff like that. Uh, and, you know, I knew I was going to go to Europe and play. But I knew I wanted to graduate first and get out of there. She got your degree? Yeah. What's the difference? I mean, because I think sometimes you forget progress. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, not a lot of people watching w, uh, watching women's basketball 25 years ago. I assume it's around, you were probably in college about 25 years. So. No, actually, I played More? 12 years in Europe. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. You, oh, we got you late. Yeah. I came in. I mean, I came in thirty five, getting ready to turn thirty six when the WNBA started. Seriously? Yeah. Wow, and you could still I, ball. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I, I watched Sue Bird at thirty eight. I'm like, I was. I mean, it's amazing how she still got, you know, still got a uh, what a run. I mean, yeah. she. I, I, I was like, wow. I mean, especially in that that Phoenix series when she took over. Mm -hmm. But what's tell me that where you see the progress, like this, back when you probably played in college, not a lot of people going to those games. I would imagine, or so so. Um, no. Well, let me tell you a funny story. So Barry Bonds and I were, you know, we were really good friends. And so. Because he was Arizona, Arizona State, State, right? Yeah. And Reggie Jackson. Yeah. Right. And, and so yeah. Barry and I were good friends. And so we lived next to each other, you know. And so I would always make him come to my games. So I'd be like, Barry, you got to come, you got to come, you know. And he'd be like, okay, you coming to my game? You coming? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming. But, you know, going to it, I hate, well, you know, I really wasn't a big baseball fan. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. So, I mean, we didn't grow up around, I didn't grow up around baseball, watching baseball. But it was so hot out there, too. So for some reason, something would always come up and I wouldn't. And then, you know, and I'd, he, he'd chew me out, you know, about it. He's like, yeah, you always want me to come in, you know, Barry, in his mouth. You always want me to come and sit in that empty ass arena <laughs> watching you play, you know, so. What's the biggest progress <laughs> you see in the women's game? What, 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 what's changed over the last 25 years in, um, your, in your view? Well, first of all, I just feel that the level of play is just phenomenal. I think women are doing so much more. I mean, it's just incredible. Not and not just physically. I mean, you look at them mentally, like just and just their reaction to things. And I mean, God, I don't. I know you got a chance to watch the finals, you know, but the the just the playoffs, the WNBA playoffs. It was just phenomenal. Just watching, just player after player, team after team, you know. So I just see that, you know, like it's just no, it's just there's no stopping, you know, the, the level of the play, speed. the speed. I mean, the clutch shooting, um, 
you know, just the strength, the power, um, just the camaraderie of the players and the will. Do you see, well, go, let's go back 22 years when you first, you know, the week just first started, which now happened to go to a bunch of your inaugural season games to now. Talk to me through the variance, because I think a lot of people out there don't understand how much the league has grown and how different it is today versus 22 years ago. Well, you have to understand the variables back then. So you had this wave of players like myself, Teresa Weatherspoon, like the majority of our team, we, we were the oldest team in the inaugural season. We, the New York Liberty was the oldest team in the league at the time. And the majority of us outside, I would say all of us except for maybe five players were pros. You know, we were grown women already playing in Europe and things like that. I think it was like Vicki Johnson, Ke- uh, Keisha Ford. Uh, Vicky and Johnson, you know, oh, and nice Keisha player. For, yeah, like it was only like a handful of players that were actual playing Sue, college. Sue. Uh-huh. Sue Bird, I mean Sue Wicks, sorry. Sue Wicks. Yeah, Sue Wicks had been playing in she, Europe. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then you take our coach, Nancy Darsh, at the time. She was at Ohio State, you know, and she was a college coach. So you had, it was so crazy. So you had us as grown women playing professional ball, then a few college players, and then college-minded coaches, you know, and then bringing it into a mix, you know, and it's kind of really weird. Okay, there's a curfew, and I'm like, I'm 35, like, huh? Like a curfew, you like a curfew? what? Oh my God! Like because they, you, you didn't have any professional coaches at that time. No professional mentality. They didn't. They, they were used to coaching children, kids. At Thirty-five. Did, did you pay that curfew? You know what? I mean, we had conversations. Yeah. You know, no, we didn't. You know, I was like, listen, I've been playing pro ball for twelve years now. You know, I understand what time I need to go. I'm a pro. You know, I understand what I need to do now. Maybe some of the kids, you know, they might not, and or you know, if you have family, you can't have people in your room. You know. I'm like, you know, so it was just real weird. It was real weird. And then you have to throw in the mix that it was the first time, you know, like it was early, like the first year especially. So you had the whole world watching. I mean, the media boom was crazy. So it was kind of like we were just instant rock stars. So you, it was just so much, you know, that we were so distracted, you know. And I think even like Lisa Leslie said, you know, the first couple of years, you know, uh, you know, she was kind of upset I think about you know her performance and you know she had to roll it back and just refocus and things like that because we were yeah. all over the place and so now it's it's a lot more focused because it's 22 years in you know and the players can focus on basketball you know and, and stuff like that so it's just so different what do you think like g- give me who, who, give me your best players uh throughout the years you've seen um, give me your, give me your all time. Give me your well, all time WNBA you know, I, I'm, team. I'm one of those weird play. Like I I have so many players. Like like I I, I like players for reasons. So Teresa Weatherspoon for the fire and for the motivation and defense and the, and the yeah and definitely and the defense you I know mean, that she gives. And then you take Vicky Johnson. You know Vicky Johnson the same lefty. thing. She was a lefty like me. You know and you know she intense defense as well. She's really smart. Uh, Becky Hammond. You know, and this is just within my team. You know, Becky yeah, she was, was just... She was an actress. She yeah. Knew to, she knew how to put on that, you know. Yeah, but she was one of those players that always had to play against people that were bigger, faster, stronger. And so she learned early on how to, how to, you know, against her brother and her dad, how to find her way, how to get her shot off, you know, and things. She's just really smart, you know. So it, it, she made it work. And she's an all-star, you know, and now look at her. But, um, and then that's, smart. that's my team. Um, I, I'm sure... Who's your I'm, center? Um, Kim Hampton. Um, no. I figured you had a four, no? <laughs> yeah, you I mean, I played, four? I, I played center. Okay. Rebecca played four. Yeah. Rebecca played the four? Yeah, she, Rebecca played. I always played. I started yeah, center. Yeah, I jumped yeah. center. Rebecca played kind of like the four. She, you know, I would take on the heavy work, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, it was like, the, it was so funny because... Um, the the first the first game of the WNBA you know it's just so it's the hype you know Lisa Leslie with her back to to Rebecca Lobo and it, you know they was just making it into this you know two Olympians you know this thing and so you I could I could look at Rebecca she was just getting out of college you know she was young and I was like coach you know I went up to Nancy Darcy you know and I was like do it, this is the week because we went out a week early you know just to do all the media and you know just to practice you know and everything you opened up in L A or yes, right I'm yeah the yeah and so um, I went up to the coach, you know, during the middle of the week, and I was like, I said, can I guard Lisa? You know, she was like, no, no, no way. You're just, just giving up too much size, you know, and just, you know, stuff like that. I said, well, I said, why don't you just let me try? I said, because I think Rebecca will be, you know, it'll give her an opportunity to relax a little bit more, you know, and stuff like that. I was shutting her down. I don't even think Lisa scored until... I, I left the game, you know. I, I went out maybe after about seven or eight minutes, you wow, know, or something like that. that. But you know, I, 
I just, you know, like that's who we were as a team. Do you think women in general, the women game, like me and Ham used to say this to me all the time, that women are much more reasonable. They, You can reason. They like to reason things out to get behind their inspiration. Where men, you just have to like yell at them and tell them what to do. With, with women, there's more of a conversation around things. They seem like they're more intelligent about uh, coming up with the right rhyme or reason. Is that out of whack in that? or No, but I, I just think it's that women are more emotional. Um if you yell at a woman, you almost have to let a person know. Let us know, you know. Wait a minute, why are you yelling at me? Right. First of all, you know. So that's. But man, you get man. It's, man like, it's just basketball. Yeah. It's just basketball. You're not doing what you're supposed to do. You know, if you're yelling at me, talking, about, you're not doing what you're supposed to do. You know, I'm kind of looking at you like, okay, now what? What else is going to this? Does she like that person more than you know? You know, like we yeah. we throw so yeah. much into the mix. You know, us as women sometimes. Yeah. So it's you know you're you're kind of on the money. Where'd you play in Europe? I played six years in Spain. Was that fun for you? Because a lot, amazing. a lot of players, you know, I don't want to say flip out, but are intimidated having to go to Europe. You're at, kind of out of your own environment. Did you feel that, or no? You know, I was that player. No, you know, like I said, I'm fearless. From, I'm, well, I or just no. wanted to see the world and just right. see. You know, different things. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. I could have gone to University of Louisville, University of Kentucky, Tennessee. You know, I could have Syracuse. gone stayed in the yeah, I could have stayed I could have gone anywhere. You know, but I So you were a top recruit. Yes. They were after you. Yes. And then I threw the shot put too, so I was a top recruit in shot put too. So I, it was like track or basketball. But basketball was just a lot more fun. When did the music thing come into play and was it hard to make a decision whether you wanted to chase it down? Because I've heard you sing. You had a beautiful voice. You heard me sing the anthem of the I heard day? you sing of course. Yeah. Oh really? Oh, and, wow. and I and you I mean you had a real voice. I mean this is not but it was it hard to decide? Because I think about like um Emma in Shameless. I don't know if you watched that show. And here she's like singing um Phantom. Mm-hmm. She's like a a classic, beautiful voice, and then she's playing this crazy woman, you know, and, and, and when did you decide, like, to give up on, I mean, was that, was a decision, like, not to go towards music and, and, the, and theater? No, the craziest thing is I was so deathly afraid to sing it. I had stage fright, crazy, and oh, I've really? been singing all of my life. All of my life. I mean, even as a kid, my mother would bring me into the room if they were having to get together, you know, the new Aretha Franklin's, like, Kim, sing this song, sing this song. And I would have to have everyone turn around and not look at me. So I never put myself out there. Okay. Yeah. Right, that's fair. So, so that was not a calling for you. You mentioned you have a, a daughter going into high school. Has she got skills? What? Uh, uh, you know, what, what, has she got your skills? Has she's she a got- guard. She's a guard, first of all. But she's she handles the ball extremely well. She's athletic you know i don't i don't believe in all the the ranking and stuff like that but like they have her ranked third in the nation in her position and you know and all of this she can go um but i just understand how important it is to kind of reel them in a little bit because i always tell her that means nothing you know what that actually means number you know it it means that you're gonna have to live up to that that's what it means okay if you're gonna be ranked and you're gonna be feeling proud you have to live up to that you can't be you can't live off of what your mom did that's got to be a springboard that's the the first thing people are going to want to say is yeah you you just living off your mom you know or you just you know a lot of people or your mom knows a lot of people so that's why you have that so i always you know just try to get hard hard to keep hard hard to keep her humble and hungry yeah she yeah but she is a she's a humble kid she's you know she's she's a funny kid you know so she's a good kid everyone will be like oh ariel she's so much fun you know and everything like that but i just need to to mold that and shape that especially with my hindsight of having played because basketball is so political especially in women's basketball and tough it's it is tough. i mean a lot of things have to go right uh to get on the you know even college now you know you go you're now you're on a team and you're on, you know you're not on the right team or stacked up in that same position you want to play and you know this there's, there's not easy to transfer out of that that those situations True. right what do you think about the game today who's your favorite players um, my favorite players, wow. I like, uh, I like, I definitely like Tina Charles. I like. Um, You're a kind of player. Yeah, exactly. Quiet, strong, silent type, and then she just slices you up. Yeah, I, and, and I like. When you, when you, by the time you wake up, you realize you've been you've been had, and yeah. she's dropped twenty something. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, she's a silent assassin. Silent assassin. You know, you look at her. I mean. And and the crazy thing about it is, is she plays you know good defense and things like that too. I mean she's she's all of I really appreciate what she does and I I appreciate 
um, the fact that, you know, she constantly works on her game, you know, works to get better. Like uh, I know she worked over the summer on the three ball, just trying to just continue to grow as a player. Yeah. But um, I like, um, uh, you know, like the craziest thing is like a lot of the UConn players, they just come pro ready. Ugh. They are so, you know, like, well, of course, you know, can recruit the best players yeah. in the nation. But what he does, the way he trains them mentally and physically is just amazing. So let's go to all of the all of the UConn players on the Liberty yeah. team. Let's go through. all. Let's, first of all, Kid, let's go through yeah, all, yeah, the, all the all the league. Yeah. All of the league and get get those. Super. Players. Yeah. Dwa- Stewie. But, but I, mean, Dwana, I was telling you before, like Dwana Bonna, like <laughs> that you're, you're, kid. I'm like, wow. But she's not a kid. She's a mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twins. She's a mom, yeah. And, yeah, she had and, twins. And, 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 she, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, she, I, I'd, I'd take her right on my team right now. Maybe, yeah. She she's one of those people you want in your foxhole. Crazy. Yes. Just, just yeah, especially defense, if you're playing, offense. Especially if you were, you know, imagine you had to go to some neighborhood and really have to show up. You weren't sure who you were going to deal with. You want to have her. Yeah. I mean, Angel <laughs> McCautry. I mean, she's, again, just just amazing. I I would have to look at every roster, and I probably this yeah. one, this one, this one. But again, a, but there are so many good players. So many. Let me ask you this, because we've talked about this uh, in my circles. You know, we're trying to figure how can we make the women's game better. How do you feel about lowering the rim to nine and a half feet, and all of a sudden you have some women <clears throat> dunking and, and 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 getting around the rim a little bit? Well, um, first of all, it would be. I think it would be tough. It could be entertaining, but I think it might be tough because women play good defense. Like we play, you know, you know. I don't know if you're going to be getting around the room. If you notice, there are a few people, players that can dunk now, but how many opportunities do they ever get? And that's because, I don't know if that's because we play below the rim, that the team defense is, is so much better. True. But, you know, unless, I don't know if there's people that can just take it off the dribble and just go, you know, down the lane and just jump over people. But I dunk. guarantee you'd be thinking about it more if you knew that that, well, that, that, that nine and a half all of a sudden puts a Dewana Bonner or a girl that's six three, six four. you know, where Brianna Stewart now all of a sudden is a dunker, potentially. Right. I Make mean, it exciting. I, I think so. I think it's possible. maybe m- possible. Let's try it in another league, maybe first, just to see. Like, um, one of the things that I'm doing, I've been consulting with this um, a league called the Global Mixed Gender Basketball League. The Global Mixed Gender. Yeah. I, and you know, every time me. we do this show, we learn something new. <laughs> what now? How does that work? How's so that it's working? men and women that are playing. And so right now, they are in. You know, they're just having ex- exhibition games, you know, and things like that. But um, I got pulled in to coach a game. Lisa Leslie and Pokey Chapman, I mean, they were um, they were the coaches of Master P. Now, these teams would be owned by celebrities. So Master where, P. Where were these games? Where? This one was in oh. Las Vegas, this okay. game, particular game. And so when you get a chance, you know, you can pull, pull it, it up. up. Yeah, I'll pull All it right. up and find All out right. some information. Cool. And so um, Tiny Harris, you know, T.I.'s wife, you know, the rapper down in Atlanta, they 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 have the uh, Atlanta Airs. She's the owner of the Atlanta Airs. So these two teams were playing. And Dominique Wilkins is supposed to be the Atlanta Airs coach, but he didn't show up. He couldn't show up. So they pulled me out of the stands and had me coach against Lisa and all these. Now, Lisa has Metal World Peace on her team. Uh, Carlos, yes, Carlos uh, Boozer. They have uh, uh, Cappy Pond Dexter. It was, it, so it's a team. Who'd you have? I had um, Shannon Bobbitt. I didn't have any pro men, any, any, yeah. Any, Maybe that was a I good had, thing, though. I, yeah, exactly. I had a players that play, and okay. you know, that may have had, you know, a couple years in the league, but they play overseas now. And then I had um, Tamara Young. She uh, plays in the WM. I had about three maybe WNBA players, but we ended up beating them, you know. And so because you know, yeah. So, but anyway, it's something different, like you said. I it's, like you, that. You, you, you mentioned to we me, have women coming to my game, and immediately the men think like, oh, yeah. I'm like, and then it, 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 within minutes, those guys are out there sitting, because the women are just smarter. They're efficient. I just feel like less ego, you know. If they're open, they're just fundamentally mm-hmm. better. Just consistently better. So when we play with women, oh, I always take that woman on my team, no question, because I know that they're going to play smart. And then every now and then, they, it's better than smart. Mm-hmm. Like we've had women come and just school us. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, just kill us, you know, and, and I love it. And I think that we're at a time now where we maybe can get it to mixed doubles, like we, we have in tennis. Maybe we can get it to the mixed game a little bit. Exactly. <clears throat> so it's really interesting. You know, and it, it, was, it was beautiful to see. Um, I mean, 
just seeing the men, how they took care with the women, you know, and the women, like, just learning to play together. Um, you know, the women tossing the guys' alley-oops, uh, the men setting the screens for the women coming off shooting threes. And so some of the rules are a little different. When a woman shoots three, it's four points, you know. Oh, um, really? When the, yeah. Um, uh, what ball are you using? It's a... Uh, it's, um, it's a it's a regular basketball. You're playing with a men's mm-hmm. ball, or it's a regular basketball. Can can women play with a man's ball, or is it? Uh, and women can do anything anything they put their minds to. Yes, because remember before they changed it when I was playing and you know in college we yeah. used to play with the men's basketball right. and no one thought about a ball is a ball is a ball. Now you know my daughter even says you know now she gets she's like this is a men's ball. So, you know I'm just like I real it's a ball. Just shoot, it doesn't matter, you know. That's true. <laughs> yeah. You get you play with what you get used to. Some get, of the things yeah. we played with in the schoolyard was insane. It's just whatever we put in our, whatever we feed our yeah. minds. Is, yeah. Have you thought about coaching or getting into that end of things? Does I, that interest you? I never wanted to coach. Now, what I know and I believe one of my strengths is is like motivating people, talking to people, like just just getting them to you know get back to the basics you know like don't worry about playing good just play hard you know do the little things you know don't worry about scoring all you're, you're always do- a grinder you're always picking up those loose balls and, and you are a very tough tough defender smart defender yeah i took i took pride in my defense you took pride you know? and, and that's why new york loves you because yeah. we, we have a very very strong affinity for people that work hard and play hard right yeah. that's it's, why we love teaspoon too another one like you two were like you know, you know, you were gonna get your hands full when you had to go deal with you guys. Yeah, it was so funny because at that point in my career, you know, my my whole game style changed because, you know, our coach at that time, Nancy Darsh, she looked at like the us, like me, Sue, Trina, Tri. She looked at us as pretty much rebounders and defenders. So not many balls came through us offensively, you know. But I've been a scorer all my life, you know. You could score it, you know. And so it was, you know, it was just kind of weird, you know, just. Uh, um, just making that transition. But again, we were team players, you know, so whatever it takes, if it takes me defending, you know, the toughest player, you know, then that's what I'm going to do. If I have my genie uh, lamp, which I don't have here, but I have it in my office, we had it here the other day, what, what would what would you want to have see happen for the WNBA that would make it a better and more, um, I don't want to say it's a really good league, but more uh, opportunistic, more popular, because it seems like more people should be watching this game. What would you like to see happen? Well, that that within itself, that it would become popular, that it would become a household name, uh, and that the players could earn a living like the men earn a living and do this here in their own home country. And, you know, I think it's a wonderful plan. I, I was really grateful to have, you know, had the European League because I got a chance to travel and learn the world and see different things. But, you know, if players want to stay here, because I think that's a problem, you know, like having to play, you know, four months here and yeah. then you have to rush off to Europe, you know, and you're just wearing yourself But thin. Tina Charles says to me that that's one of the biggest problems with the league is that the women aren't around in the off season to promote. Exactly. And they're off to Europe. Exactly. Did you feel, do you feel like the Europe game, they appreciate the women's game more than we appreciate the game here? Um, in some sense? <laughs> Yes and no, but because, again, it's in those circles. It's in those circles. Um, you know, when you get over there, you have certain towns that have a history of great teams and great women's basketball. So, yeah, it's really, really big. But, you know, you go to a town like Milan, for example, you know, and it's it might not be as big. So because yeah. soccer is Because you see, like, the Atrocity making, you know, a million-plus dollars with a chef and this and that and then paying a hundred, barely $100,000 a year here. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, you can understand why you would have a chip. Yeah. And you get in the same game, yeah. which, by the way, is why everyone should be running to these uh, games because it's probably the best bargain, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah, exactly. it's, it, it really is. When you think about it, you got the best players, and it, the seats are really inexpensive. Really? And you're Lower watching ball. great quality ball. Um, so, yeah, the salaries, again, uh, and just that it would be a household name, that, that women could actually stay here in America and play you know, during their season and have an off season yeah. to be with their families and to rejuvenate and to relax, you know, mentally and physically. So, I mean, that would be it. And then that we would just have a strong fan base and, and that people would become educated, you know, in, in women in sport. You're right. What's next for you? And and what what really keeps you busy these days now? Well, it, it's a it's a lot of different things. You're I mean, a mom. I, yeah, I am definitely. Yeah, I'm a mom for a teenager that's just going to high school, and that and her playing being a being a basketball player and a and a good basketball player is is a full time. That soccer mom, 
term. Oh my God! Because you kind of have to. I mean, not that you have to be. I imagine you've got to be very proud. You got to. You're kind of traveling around with her to some degree. AAU. I don't know if people realize the depth. Even on now high level women's basketball, I just, I, you know, it's all year round. You're going here, you're going there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it's here, expensive. I, oh my. Oh my God. I right? need. I like need a job. Someone. You know. I do. I need a job. No, it, seriously. Like I. It is amazingly it is amazing how expensive it is and just and then it's expensive with your time and with you know just everything so um i'm doing that and i still do community relations with the team here and there um, i see you at a lot of games yeah right? I, I but i'm a fan you know i go to the games as a fan i mean and sometimes i have appearances there at the games. do the players ask you like i always wonder this i always ask clyde frazier i said clyde you got the best seat now so you watch every play you're one of the greatest Knicks of all time. The players come over to you, ask for advice. He says, "Never." Yeah, do, do, it's do, never, ne- do never. Ever? You know, never. I mean, they they really don't. Um, <laughs> uh, and it's. I think that's management too. You know, I think a lot of that is management. When you, again, when you have people that run the team that don't have a relationship, and I mean, a you know, like the relationship with the history of of you know. And, and you have people yeah. here, you know, they're the connections. They're supposed to make that connection. Um, you know, it's it's kind of different. They just, you know, choose, okay, those are the players. Okay, this is Kim. She used to play. And I might see them on certain, see them at certain appearances, but really not. But if I see someone, you know, and I'm just saying anything, you know, like you're doing good, just keep going. Go a little harder, you know, play hard. You know, I'm, I'm always willing to give advice, you know, and things like that because I want these girls to you're, succeed. You're sitting there watching the game. You've got to have, I mean, you can always take your advice and throw it in the garbage if you don't agree, but of course, it's got to be you've been there done it yeah. right yeah. I'm, I'm just I'm always I'm a constant advice seeker yeah. I'm just triggering what, what do I need to go live through every situation fully when I go get and just ask somebody for some advice that's already been through it right kind of seems simple to me yeah. well another thing no I just want yeah. to tell you this okay. so another thing um, that I've recently done I've teamed up with Ashley Stewart and Ashley Stewart is a clothing company um, that's becoming a movement, shall I say. Um, and I've created a tall line, a tall plus size line. And plus size clothing, you know what that is. It's like clo- if you're not a straight size person, like, so let's just say maybe 10. I grew right? up with my mom going to Lane Bryant. Okay, there you go. So then you know. Yeah. That's the only story I ever knew. All right. I understand that 100%. <laughs> and I think that, I don't know if people really understand when you're an odd size, yeah. how difficult it is to oh, find clothing. Oh, my God. Right? But can I just tell you, this is one of my shirts. I love that shirt, line, by the way. You know, and it's, but but I would never normally be able to go into that store and get a shirt that has the sleeves that come you know right here because I had look at that wingspan, you know. And, I would and love pants. that wingspan on my team right now. <laughs> and pants that fit or shirts that come long <laughs> enough, you know. That's a cool shirt though. Yeah. So, so where, where do you get that? So you can go to ashleystewart.com or you can check out my website kimhampton.com and it'll take you. Is that to, the best way to communicate with you, like kimhampton.com or your social media? You can, I, I am I am on social media, so you know my Instagram is kimhampton one k y m. We gotta post that on there on yeah. the uh, kimhampton.com. Yeah. But uh, so are you like involved with the actual design of this or? Um, so this well, is a very entrepreneurial process. Yeah. Here. Well. Well. You know, they asked me some of the things that I like um, because I felt like it was important for women to have, you know, business looks to be able to, you know, be comfortable. I want the whole gamut. I want to be able to go to a basketball game and have a cute sweatsuit on with my cute sneakers on, you know, if I want. So I want everything. And then I want to be able to throw on a dress and feel beautiful and sexy, you know, in my dress. Can you get all that with this new line or, you, or is it more just... We're, we're building. You you have... I. Right now, you do have all of those pieces, except for the sweatsuits and things like that. We don't have that yet. So, you know, we're t- in talks to continue to build this line out. Where's your, where's your products being sold? At, at the, no, it's, the at, it's, it's, it's right. Everything is it is brick online. and mortar, though? It's all, nothing no, brick and mortar. Nothing yet. Because, of course, the way Ashley Stewart has restructured and the way they're running the company is, you know, they don't want to manufacture a bunch of clothes inventory. and send them out in inventory, right? And, and then they don't know if it's going to sell or, or where do you send it. So, right now, everything is... Wow. Online. So you're an entrepreneur. Uh, I'm trying to be. As you should be. I mean, why not? You have the name and you got a big following in New York. My question is, how are you marketing this product line to your fan base? Well, right have now. Have you made that connection? Well, well, right now it's pretty much social media. Uh, it's word of mouth. It's uh, my website and, and things like that. And then this opportunity to be here. So every time I, you know, I get an opportunity to speak about it, I, I do. And so just really... Um, reaching out to my, I have a lot of friends that are, you know, into fashion, their makeup arts, they do a lot of different things. So everyone is, you know, really trying to push as well. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. So you're having fun with it. 
I am. I really am. How many months into this are you? This is, uh, I mean, from maybe six months right now, just from first meeting to actual launch of the product. So it's gone pretty fast. So now we have to go back in and have more meetings about which direction we're going. It's complicated fashion. But I do know some people in fashion. We got to keep keep me in touch because. Uh, but I, I'm more than happy to promote it. I love the entrepreneurial aspect because, especially with apparel and especially with clothing, there's a lot of aspects to it besides just coming up with beautiful stuff to wear, uh, and inventory and costing and pricing and then marketing and then coming up with a brand. But you know, it's it's more than that too for me because growing up, like you said, you grew up with your mom shopping at Lane Bryant. I grew up shopping. When I was 10, I wore a size 10 shoe. When I was 12, I wore a size 12. Now, I was born in 62. So there, was no, there was nothing. So there nothing was, for me. There was nothing. no short I short. shopped as a little girl. I had to shop in Lane Bryant because they did carry, a tall, carry tall back then. Right. You know, but now, you know, it's just plus, you know. and so. I felt so bad for my mom because she never could go into a regular store. Hey, never, imagine. they never. There was, you know, it's crazy. And even her, you know, she had a bigger, long, bigger foot. Same thing. And it's, it's aggravating, especially where with women, clothes are huge. It's so important. It's, and imagine a woman, a young girl, a teenager, trying to feel feel beautiful. So for me, it's more of a movement. So that's why we came up with the stand tall because yeah, like you want to stand tall in who you are and be proud of your height, not hunching down. And when you're, when you know, we know that if your uniform is great and you feel good, you know, you have some those those uniforms that you're trying to get the W. NBA players, those new. <laughs> Kim, I, I've said this a hundred times. And I'll say it a hundred and one. Uniforms matter. Yes, okay? they and do. I remember Derek Jeter saying to me, "There's a reason why I became a Yankee." It's pinstripes and that, that's why you want to be yankee initially right you know we always just kid around about the michigan uniforms not being that nice but now they got the air jordan which is really cool right. and i'm like i i just don't understand why the women are wearing g league stuff <laughs> and and that's a little nicer this year you know they get they, but you know really it's not as nice as it could be right like pull out the a plus stuff is my thing when you look because good, it, you feel it, good and it's women i mean who's gonna wear your stuff better than women I mean, I've, I've, I don't need that this stuff to be sex symbol like, but I've seen a lot of schools have really nice, really cool uniforms to make the women look better, feel better. That the stuff's colorful. It's you could see some energy got put into it. Exactly. I don't feel like the WNBA uniform has a lot of energy and style to it, but and I think it matters. I think that stuff matters. I think it it, it creates a look and a feel and a vibe that adds to the brand. But the game, the, the level of play. Still supersedes all of it, right? Yes, sir. It's hot. We're not, I'm telling you, again, you know, it is. It's definitely hot. We're not even thinking about uniforms. Can you I know? buy a Kim Hampton <laughs> throwback T-shirt? No, but I could buy some guy who played 40 years ago in the NBA T-shirt. Not that there's anything wrong with that, because I like wearing my Oscar Robertson shirt. You know, I like the big O. I pull out my I have my Bill Walton shirt. Hey. I'm not going to lie. And I have my Diana Taurasi shirt that I play in. But last night I was looking online. Cause thinking I need another down trouser shirt. I've gone through two of them already, and I'm like nothing. One shirt, one purple shirt. I don't wear purple when I play. You know, <laughs> I wear that? white or gray. I don't like know. Barney. There's so many issues. Yeah, <laughs> I don't wear purple t-shirts. I wear purple shorts or purple sneakers. So does the Diana Taurasi, does that does that give you a little mm? does that you it's know no it's question like, you know because Tina yeah. you you remember Tina uh, Tina Thompson um, she used to wear the the lips the the Mac I love line, that, that and I love that yeah, she did that exactly I, you know it was, to her, me, it was her good luck it started lipstick. with Starks I went to Starks' house John Starks uh -huh. to pick up him up for an appearance and I saw he had his practice stuff there I'm like John this is perfect. Sneakers fit me. Shorts are kind of pretty close to my size. I'll take all this. He's like, wait, wait. I said, no, I'll take it. And what happens, I started playing with all his stuff on. And I just started thinking of John. Like, and I started booking him for a lot more stuff. And so I call him up. I said, I got this for you. I got that for you. I, got I think it's because I'm wearing your stuff when I play. So, yeah, you know, so I still wear Jordans. I wear Kobe's think it's going to help my game. I'm not going to lie. I put my Kobe's on. I think I'm playing a little more like Kobe. Okay. And I know it's delusional, <laughs> but I, I do. I wear I wear Tarasi's shirt because I know the way she handles herself on the court, and I, li I like that, and I want to play a little like that. Hey. As a man thinketh, so is he, you know? We but my complaint is equal it up you can make the button on the w on the nba side a little bigger so you don't need a microscope you know uh, uh, uh to, to see the button for WNBA products and you have the greatest player of all time not to mention is at least a dozen other and it, it, listen they have something for each one of those players but one thing i guarantee you there's like a hundred things for lebron yeah. and i'm not saying there should be a hundred things for dan Trossi, but you could have more than one yeah right 
I You're mean, right. I mean, it's fair. It's not a big ask. Uh, yeah, it's not. And a I'm big just ask. some 59 year old guy who's delusionally still wearing this stuff, but so I'm grateful to still play. But imagine all the girls that probably want that stuff. Exactly. Exactly. All the tourists that come to town, and yeah. Here, I'd like it. to see you on the bench, though, man. I can see you coaching a little bit. Yeah, you won't see me on the bench. Nah, I don't like coaching. It, nah. You know what? I don't have the patience to coach. Um, I don't. And yeah, it's tough. Yeah, exactly. It's a grind. Yeah, I would rather. But do you right now, you'll take you, you, you'll focus on your your daughter. Yeah, definitely. Well, I see her now that we've had this conversation. Is something we should be watching? Everybody out there, is this going to be a little? Definitely, my daughter is going to Bishop Lachlan High School. Oh, nice little, um, nice little school. Yeah, she's so a, that's real. So yeah. she got recruited. Her name is uh, Ariel Jackson. Um, Ariel Jackson. Uh huh. And um, yeah, she's a guard. Have you and, got the colleges after already or no? Yeah, she's getting letters. Yeah, I mean, she's getting getting some nice letters and that's things crazy. Like that. Yeah, that's and no, enough. that's what I said. I was just kind of like. Phew. This early, good goodness, you know. But just keeping, you know, I just want to keep her grounded, keep keep her working hard, you know, just letting her know that, you know, school, yeah, just school, everything. Yeah. I think I think that athletes that are uh, academically sound are just a lot more attractive. Definitely. People, I think the kids don't realize that as good as their game is, there's still a risk because you get to school and you can't make it. Uh, you may not be able to, you may not be eligible. And I think a lot of players discount that, that when they are academically sound, you don't have to be a brain surgeon, that's up to you, but academically sound just means you're putting an effort in. Definitely, and right? that's, that's what I say. If you're not, if you make an average grades, basically you're saying to the coach, you know what, I'm just doing enough to get by and I really don't care, you know, because this is what I want. And, you know, and, and coaches feel like this. If you're just riding the rails in high school, why would I – you know, invest thousands of dollars into you when you might not. And when, you know, that college load is going to be a lot tougher to juggle and to handle. Why would I invest thousands when there are a dime, you're a dime a dozen. You can go across the nation and find 12 players like you, you know. So, I, you know, that's, that's I like that. Thing. Yeah. I think winning is a life choice. I mean, that kind of, that kind of I want to be great at everything is a life choice, not a particular here and there's choice. I think that's a mistake people make. And I'm going to make this choice. And it's either you're that way or you're not. Yeah. Especially when you get to like lottery stuff, like playing on a Division One top school is lottery level. Like there's thousands of kids that want to do that, and there's only hundreds of opportunities. Right. Right. It's so true. So, it's you so know, true. Some of these jobs, if you want, to, you want something that thousands, like hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people want to do what you 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 want, then you had better be all in on every aspect. But that's what I love to do. Like I love to talk to students, especially student athletes, about. You know the choices that they have like you can control a lot you know you decide how well you shoot you decide how well your ball handling skills are you just you decide and determine how high your IQ is now I believe that some of those things are naturally you're gifted naturally gifted you know in certain things and some people just have a natural knack to score or a natural knack to rebound you know you have those players like oh my god Dennis Robin like you know I mean it's just well I know that because I have none of that <laughs> Everything I do on a court is, you know, basically I've earned. <laughs> okay. God didn't give me any of that. Okay, but see, I'm then not, you're I'm the perfect. I'm upset about it. Then, then you've <laughs> said it right there. You, you developed yeah. that level of play because you worked at it. You had to understand that this is I lack this, so I have to be conscious of this. And that's the biggest thing I think. Kids, we just exist, you know. Like, and it's not just kids; it's us as adults yeah. too. We just exist without knowing where we want to go and what we want to do. So you're right. Love the clothing line, KimHampton.com. <laughs> Check her out. I'll see you at, I'm sure, at some games. I think I see you at some NBA games, too, every now and then. Yeah, yeah? every now and then. Yeah, probably I kind of don't go But I like you more, speaking but... of probably, there's a lot of women teams that probably could use your use your, your insight. For sure. Keep up the good work. I appreciate it. Am I going to hear your voice ever, or? <clears throat> what do you want me to sing for you? Give me a song. I, I'm, thinking I, I'm just thinking that, that I don't want the voice to go, you know, to get lost. Okay, yeah, it's not going to get lost. Okay. I'm doing a little bit of recording. You are. Yeah, You're keeping it alive. I'm keeping it alive. Yeah, I'll right. do some shows here and there. I'll, I'll invite you. I'd back. have you sing. If I if, if I had my brothers, I'd have you sing the National Anthem every Liberty game. Oh, for real? Oh, my God. Just, why, why not? <laughs> yeah. I mean, right? Why not get, get you fired well, up? But, well, let me just tell you. Well, because it's a financial thing. <laughs> no, for the Liberty. <laughs> but it'd be worth it. i have you there, yeah. do a little corporate before the game, and then have you write into the National Anthem. Yeah, it might get a little boring. You know, no. <laughs> there's something about consistency, yeah. and that you know, like George Steinbrenner always had Robert Merrill sing national anthem night after night after night. We never got bored with that, right? Such exactly. A thought. It's Kim Hampton, everybody.